Welcome to Pod Watcher, the official podcast of Watcher Entertainment. I'm Brian Bergara. I'm Shane the Dave. And I'm Stephen Lim, and this is my final episode of Pod Watcher. It's a hit. It's not, it's I'm just, not his. Uh, I was just, uh, sorry, I just, unbelievable. Uh, and this is a show where we chat about whatever's on our minds every week, and this week we dive into tattoos, finally. Cockroaches, finally. And tipping! Oh, We're talking about tipping. Oh. Also, as always, if you're listening to this uh, in the audio version, please subscribe and rate the podcast five stars. And if you're watching over on youtube.com slash watch your podcasts, go ahead and subscribe and like there. These things do help keep this podcast alive if you're into that kind of thing. But without further ado, shall we begin? We usually banter a bit before we get into the topics. Shane I want to confirm are, you have tickets for me tonight, right? Because yeah, I you, did cancel my other tickets. Yeah, you and I are. Ugh, you're you guys going to see Dune tonight? I was going to go see the new Wim Wenders film tonight. And I was like. I think it's worth canceling. Yeah, for opening <laughs> night, Grauman's Energy, dude. Mm-hmm. It's going to be so fucking sick. I cannot wait to see this film. I, and you know, I will say this. I was definitely wrong about the first Dune. I don't know what happened the first... This Has this happened to you where you've seen a movie for the first time and for whatever reason you just didn't like it? Opinions and then, change. I, I don't... I think everyone should allow their opinions to... to change on things i think i really can, hated it the first time though. all right you weren't keen on it it's, i think as i was sleepy we were coming off a shoot i think i was coming from a shoot to mm. go to it mm. and uh and then we had some cocktails before which made me more sleepy and then uh i just found myself kind of like nodding off in the first act yeah. and then they just kind of lost me from there i've been there i i fell asleep during infinity war that's crazy i got that's off a of plane way. oh that makes sense but then you seen dune dune one yeah yeah you like it? I'll tell you if I like it after I watch Dune 2. I think that's a fair... That's how I feel about... Look, I, I think uh, Cross the Spider-Verse, really fun, I love incredible film. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's successful until I see the one after it. I don't know. I disagree with that. I, th- I, I, I think just it was pretty satisfying. It's... Yeah. I don't fully agree with that. I don't think it's satisfying. I get what, I get what you're saying. You said that about the Pirates of Two or whatever. You said oh, that about Pirates Pirate. Two. You yeah, well, piece of shit. It's not even. Done. <laughs> these are two. We're talking, putting them in the same sentence as these other two franchises, which are like works of art. Pirate Dead Man's Chest. You're gonna ride for <laughs> Dead Man's. Over, you're gonna ride for Dead Man's Chest. It's unbelievable over. at World's End. Um, I'm these very excited for art. Dune. There's a uh, lot of hype. There's, there's almost. I'm scared because there's almost too much hype. I mean, I, I film. loved it the second time I watched it. We Dude, I'm won. happy to hear that. Mari watched it for the first time with me, um, and she loved it too. It's a little slow in the beginning, so I could talk. I could understand why if you're not really gripped by that first act, you could yeah. get lost. I actually understand why people don't like it, but I do like it now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I actually thought it was more gripping in the second act, for sure, of the first movie, but then. Because it didn't end, I was I was just frustrated. Mm-hmm. As somebody who likes endings, uh, I'm, I don't know anything about the book, nor read the book, so I, I'm everything will be new information for me tonight. Did Thanks. you see? Uh, this is in the news. We can all talk about this. You seen this? You heard about this? By the time this episode comes out, it will be out there. But as of March first, there's going to be three new Nicole Kidman Nicole Kidman spots at AMC. <laughs> I'm a little concerned about it. What? Yeah, I think I might see one tonight. Hopefully. If they, if they, if I think they should put them in front of Dune. It's, they should. It's they February 29th. Should. It says March first. It says though. March first. But, but I'm but seeing it. I will be in the theater March first. Uh, that like at midnight. I'm oh, you it at 11 p.m. Oh, Damn. No, dude. you're gonna miss it. No, you oh. think they're gonna hold it? But Dune one mm. is. Dune is. Dune two is where they should put it. Dude, it is. God, I'll, I'll so, report back. I'm so fascinated to see how they're going to approach it because uh, it is a thing where it was lightning in a bottle. People yes. loved it for what it was, but now is it too self-aware? Are they too self-aware of what it is? I find that when a major corporation makes something cool by accident, yeah. when they become aware of it and try to replicate it, almost never yeah. the same effect. But there is a weird energy about around it where like, it's it's like a falsified energy and excitement for it. Like the people clapping when she comes on. It's like yeah. a bit of a like I don't yeah. even know that it's falsified. I oh, I agree with a, that. I think it might be. It's falsified. We're all in on the joke. Yeah. Everyone's in on the joke, but it feels earnest. It, the enthusiasm for it feels like it feels like it But the clapping is ironic. I for I me don't know. I don't think so. I think I think it might have what, bell curved me, into being what it did was real. it distilled, especially because of the pandemic. I think the pandemic, especially post-pandemic, people were suddenly like, 
we've been kind of taking this experience yeah. for granted and it's nice to be in a room with a bunch of people seeing a movie mm. and i think that really kind of like coalesced with that little yeah. ad which yeah. was like it's so nice to be in a in a movie theater even though she's alone in it which is very funny yeah um <laughs> Uh, and I, so I do think like that attitude is what people still clap about. I what, think that's what's underneath it. Did all. it come out right around the pandemic? Was it? I think it came out after. First? I think maybe for okay. you that's what it is. But I do. I think that's what's like the beating heart of it. Even though maybe people don't necessarily. I, I agree with it that. It's nice to be back in the theater. I think it's, it's nice to be and we back, do all get back to, to the movies. Personally, yeah, exactly. just <laughs> like Tommy. To uh, I I think it. There are a fair amount of people that ironically clap for it. Like I yeah. I think that it was one of those things that despite its best best efforts, it actually succeeds in being a pleasurable view. Like, it's a pleasure yeah it's because it's not it's goofy at its core like it's like a goofy weirdly made thing like the movie clips that they cut to when she said i mean e even if it's like ironic for some people it's been hap people still clap for it like it's a yeah. beloved campy thing at this point but it, it, yeah i guess it's like that whole like fake laughing into real laughing thing where you like can f yeah. fake yourself into oh this is enjoyable this is similar fun. to the room to me that's how i see people interact with it at showings i've been to especially like a midnight crowd they will react to it as yes, it gets the room that's a great point they fake their interest into it into and then real actually, and then they realize i actually am into this like yeah it's like a, at this point it's like a like a, it's like an announcement for hey we're at the movies now let's clap it's starting well what do you call something that's ironic that starts as an ironic thing but then eventually becomes something you genuinely enjoy which is not exclusive to this nicole kidman thing it happens no, sure, all the time sure, sure i don't know i think i think people are so prone to be ironic about stuff that maybe maybe that's their first way to interact with some things and then maybe after a while they're like oh no it's fun to clap about being in a movie theater yeah so the announcement on the the kidman thing yeah is it Three unique spots? I think so. Yeah, I'm I think, I think ro three rotating unique spots. Whoa. So that'll be fun. You gotta gotta catch them all. Yeah. But do you think the first one was good because of the creative direction of AMC, or do you think it just happened, it stumbled upon it? I got I mean, I have faith in that it was made to be that. Do you but do you think they could have ever anticipated like no, I think no. they made no no, I no. Think it was self important. Yeah. I yeah. think they actually made it on the heartbeat that you're mentioning which is probably why it did resonate they it was they did because there was an interview with her shortly after it was like very shortly after it had become a phenomenon it was not like the you know as it was like sort of bubbling up that someone was doing an interview with her and they were like so what do you think about you know people going crazy over this and she at that point did not know it's a fun interview to read. How is that possible? Because it it was just like the very early days of people mm, like I applauding see. and like saluting her. This was before it was like huge. Mm. And she was like, oh, are you kidding me? That's crazy. That's and, awesome. and they were like, yeah, how did that come about? And she talked about it and she was like, well, I just, you know, uh, I knew, I think she said she like knew someone who worked at, you know, I don't know, like a higher up at AMC and she, they had <laughs> asked her about it. And she was like, I really want to do something. And she was actually the one who like, she was like, so I, you know, I, I called up one of my old screenwriter pals and he wrote the script. So she was like instrumental in cut. So, and, oh, and wow. I genuinely think that she's like a very, obviously every, you know, major like A-list movie star yeah. is like a, a champion for cinema. Cause, you know, um, so yeah, I think it came from a very earnest place and I, I hope, you know, they just take that same approach. I don't know. If it's just celebrating the movies, which is why, you know, people enjoy Tommy. I yeah. suppose, but I, I do wonder how these commercials play outside of Los Angeles, because obviously we're all cinephiles down here. I've we worship theaters in like Illinois where people clap. Well, Illinois also pretty happening. That's true. The burbs less so. I though. think people still they're part of it. Yeah. Don't you don't. I mean, Maybe LA boy over here. Do they, I don't know if they have movies. In do, they think, do they have music <laughs> in the do radio? Do you guys have movie theaters? <laughs> do, is it all driving? Nah. <laughs> I thought it was all driving. You know what though? I also think it's a fun, like, I think it's been a while since there was at least a major chain. AMC for a long time, which is, I assume, one of the biggest chains, if not the biggest movie I mean, chain. AMC, yeah. hate yeah. them or love them, they kind of saved movies. For sure. But like for the longest time, their pre-show entertainment was just like, 
Coca-Cola surfing with a popcorn. There, there, there was like there were these little guys that were like riding little helicopters, and they yes. would go into the soda. I used to love. So that. it's been a while Actually, since I, there I was like that one. Yeah, it's been yeah. a while since there was a pre-show thing that was like the power. Like I remember back, like Sony theaters in the late '90s had like a fun little like we're going to the movies. It was like a big montage with old Dude, movie clips. Have, have you seen the Regal one? No, it's fucking horrendous. It, they they finally got rid of it. Oh, was that the one where everyone's quoting lines? Oh from my movies? god, it is yeah, one of the most insufferable <laughs> oh, yeah. things I've ever seen. It's just like all the most annoying people. Yeah, <laughs> was but, AMC the one where the guy had the popcorn? He like got scared by the popcorn or whatever. I don't think so. Yeah, that sounds good. In the AMC one, there was a moment where a guy takes a sip of his soda and he does this like weird thing with his mouth where he like finds it with a straw <laughs> know, yeah. and my brother and i used to always make fun of that every time it would come up one of my favorite ones uh was the one where they i want to say it ran for a good five years at amc where they walk into the theater and then it slowly starts to turn for no reason into a magical forest remember that one and yeah and they're like yes 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 yeah, yes, yeah. yes. see <laughs> you know what this is making me realize and this has just been a major flowers are like little zoetropes going back to what we started with i'm um, just on nicole kidman it makes me realize that what a massive blind spot that to nobody is actually monetized on the idea of everybody is going to be forced to watch this pre-show every movie that's ever made is going they're gonna have to watch this before they see the movie so why don't we actually put some effort into making something that's like legitimately really good i think they try maria menounos is doing that every maria day. I, I love or she's hey, like, like no I disrespect that popcorn <laughs> no disrespect to maria but i just don't think it's not something that everyone could like Perry, legitimately Perry's enjoy. picks I just think the nicole kidman thing finally hit on the idea that like wow everyone's gonna be forced to watch this and if it rules, yeah, that could be a big moment. They should bring in, you know, some these directors for those things. That's what I'm saying. They should go you for know? it. Like Chris Nolan tenant this fucking shit. Yeah. You know? Just want to say, we didn't mention Cinemark's Front Row, Joe, and uh, well, people will be upset about Cinemark's that. So front I'm mentioning row, Cinemark's Front Row, I've never row, seen Joe. it. I don't know who this is. No. You've Cinemark? never seen Front Row, Joe? I've never no, seen Front never Row, No, never seen it. And him and the, I, the number of times I've been to a Cinemark in my life, I could count on. Well, he's, he ain't around no more. You know what? Let's Let's a reward the the audience for sitting through that by giving them something we've been promising which is the cockroach story the cockroach story Shane. It's, it's not i was realizing as i was uh coming in today i was like i don't remember I don't remember all the details. God damn, man. You can't say that after no. I'm like let's reward the audience you know what i was thinking Here's, about it so we stuck okay. it sucks let me get into it. I, I feel like I've been fairly lucky in Los Angeles, especially when all this went down, because I was talking to people about this and people were like, oh, man, I yeah, cockroaches. I feel like that's something I've dealt with in L.A. a bunch. And I, I have a few. Yeah. yeah. I've never I've dodged it so far. But I, up in, we use the uh, Orkin. Uh, the fuck yeah, is that? Orkin. Orkin, man. Orkin uh, pest control. They come by our house like once a month and like. Nice. Do they come on a little boat and chemicals. kill the cockroaches? They, they, they have done a, I mean, not an advertisement for Orkin by any means, but we haven't had any cockroaches since they started coming in. Interesting. Yeah. Well, it all started, um, <laughs> <laughs> I remember most of the details. It all started, uh, I want to say close to six months. Interesting. To a, to a well. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Uh, okay. So it all started, I want to say maybe six months to a year ago. There was one morning. We woke up and Obi, and this has happened before where Obi will suddenly take an interest in something and we're like, what are you doing, you fucking weirdo? Yeah. And then we'll find out like, oh, he was looking at something. He was doing his job. You know, he was doing what cats ought to do, which is like, he's paying attention cats, to, cats to intruders. Little, and, yeah. Pests. Mm. There was one time he was like looking over by the window and there were like little termites coming in. Ooh. Mm. We were like, fuck. Good boy, um, Obi. They got rid of those. Um, Obi did? No, he was just like staring at them and being like, no, I thought he got rid of them and yeah. invoiced you. So there was one morning he was like, kind of like pawing at one of the corners of our bedroom. And we were like, what is he doing? Yeah. Goes, you know, it was like 6 a.m. or 5 a.m. Oh, so like, yeah. Go, go, yeah. Go to sleep. And um, he kept doing it and kept kind of going crazy. And then he like ran away. And then Sarah said, oh my God, I think there's a mouse in here. Oh. And I was like, what? <laughs> uh, and because we heard Obi had left, but then we heard something in the corner. Yeah. Um, kind of like between our nightstands. So it was like kind of hard to see. And I 
so of course it's like five thirty or six in the morning. So going from basically being asleep to being like, okay, got to deal with this. That's all, you know, it's yeah. a, it's a very quick ramp. So yeah. I jumped up and I went to look in the corner. It was not a mouse. It was a big fucking roach. How big we talking? Like, like if we're going to compare it to an item so I the listeners say can understand. This, uh, three inches. So that's like the size of perhaps like a, one of those orange or or those pink erasers, maybe more, maybe a little bigger than that. It's a big, boy. bigger than a pink eraser. So a little bigger than a, maybe the size of a pink eraser. Quite big. Chicken tender. That's too big. <laughs> that would be crazy. <laughs> that would be fucking crazy. Yeah, I, would, I would, I would pass away. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I want to, I want to say up top, I'll, I'll clarify. Well, I'll, I'll say this right now. Cause this happens again later, but dill pickle. I'm like not, a little baby dill? Um, maybe a baby dill. Dude, that's fucking it was, huge. It was, I don't know. It was like that big. That's huge. It was <laughs> so large. Big. It was big. It was big. Could you actually clock the legs? That's how you know roach is big when you could actually see the legs. Yes. We heard it. Dude, that is disgusting. We, it, was, it was in the corner like, I don't know. You know, they usually hide. So it was like in the corner kind of clawing up the, trying to claw up the wall. We could hear its legs. Oh, God. Was it a flyer? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, it was, hate, it was, it was scrounging I've, around. None of these I've I've seen fly. I hate roaches. I, uh, so much. Oh. Uh, there was, I was one time staying in New York with with a friend, and he had flying he roaches? had a, he had two scary. flying roaches Damn, oh my around God. my head while I was on his couch. Oh, scariest thing I've ever roaches seen. Roaches are bad. Roaches so, going airborne. So I want to say this: I, I as someone who is like I don't get creeped out by bugs. Yeah. Um, but there is a Similar to like when there's a mouse in the house, huh. which which nice. which we've we'd had every now and then in in well, Illinois. Stephen, you know that, right? That's a basketball term. Oh, well, when you, I unfo I unfortunately, no, tell me, I'm unfortunately at the other end of this all the time. Uh oh. But when there is a big uh -oh. guy in the post, and I have been switched on to him, and I'm trying to guard him, he will scream, "Mouse in the house!" <laughs> <laughs> and that means I have a smaller guy on me. Yeah, throw me the ball. But what they don't know is I could jump really high and I would often block that big I've one. actually never but, heard that term because I am no mouse. I love that. Do you, do you uh, rub it in by doing your little laugh when you... Uh, yeah. Oh, did I tell you, you I used to do that? <laughs> I, yeah, I told you I used to do that. When I used to play basketball, one of my skills squeak, was... Squeak, squeak. I could, I could <laughs> jump pretty high because at one point I was able to dunk. So I could block people and I, would, I was one of the leaders on the team in blocks because I would trick people into thinking like, oh, they're switched on to me. And then when I would block them, I would always make sure to make a little, <laughs> <laughs> like a little mouse, and it would piss them off. Uh, mouse in the house—that's funny. But mouse in the house—I've heard that a lot. Well, my point is, so there's no—I'm uh, not like I'm afraid of this cockroach is going to kill me, or or it's going to bite me. But there is a a quick ratcheting up of adrenaline when you're in a situation where you're like, I have to act. Yeah. And either do something to catch this or kill it. Otherwise, it's going to get away. Yeah. So it suddenly be so the the nerves that I experience Dude, you're are my, on a par with fear. My heart is actually being really, <laughs> really fast for some reason. Yes. Like it's you know what it is? Do you remember the big roach in MIB? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I keep imagining that face on this guy. Yeah. <laughs> that shit is so fucking scary. I I don't like it. I don't so, like roaches. So um, I, I told Sarah to clear the room. Yeah. I went and grabbed the vacuum. Huh. Oh, suck them up in the shop vac. Plugged it in, got the hose, because it was still in the corner, and I was like, don't, uh, it wasn't moving. But I was like, I'm going to try and get it with the vacuum. Imagine the noise it would make if you got it, too. So satisfying. I don't have to imagine it. It ran. So I, I stabbed at it with the vacuum. It started running under the bed ran luckily there's like nothing under the bed so i was able to see it under there where's sarah when this is all happening hallway kitchen you know? <laughs> <laughs> not that she's like Watching ah, behind a riot she's shield. actually pretty chill about these things uh because again she's also not like afraid of bugs mm -hmm. so she's not like ah <laughs> you know she's just like okay good luck um <laughs> <laughs> you know i don't think there's any value to both of us trying to like you know i'm not asking her to put on oven mitts and uh so 
So it ran to then under my nightstand and I started like once again stabbing wildly with the vacuum hose. Then it got under the bed and I and I finally nailed it and it got sucked up into the vacuum. Oh my gosh. And I was like, oh, incredible. I could see it in the tank and I was like, I, okay, I got to take this down to did, the garage. Did you send it to the, to the Smithsonian? Because like that sounds like a bug that should be at the Smithsonian or that bug museum from your bachelor party. Oh, that wasn't that wonderful. They, you should have sent it there. <laughs> it's 105 degrees out. We went to a bug museum in New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> so it's in the vacuum tank. I take it down to the garage. Yeah. I dump it into a garbage bag and stomp on the garbage bag until I hear a crunch. Wow. Uh, so that's- Did you check? What? For the residue? For like the creamy cream cheese kind of like. No, because there was a bunch of vacuum dust and stuff too. So it was pretty well pat. Like I didn't see what was in there. It was out. It was gone. This is so disgusting. So that was, you know, a year or so ago. And when it happened, I was like, you know, then I was on high alert and I was like, okay, I'm looking for something, you know. Because there's never one. That's a thing people say. There's never one. People say that about bed bugs too. And we had one bed bug. That's a whole other ball of yarn oh, um that happened like five years ago there was we had one bed bug uh that somehow must have gotten in from outside or something and everyone was like there's there's never just one uh but we did somehow have one we isolated it we took care of they're it sneaky. and then have never had any How other did you, they're small this one was uh i tore apart my room like in the final scene of the the conversation <laughs> starring gene hackman uh i i literally was like i had a drill and was uh uh i disassembled our bed yeah bit by bit until wow. i found it between two slats of wood damn yeah uh and i when i when i laid eyes on it it was like a horror i was like oh my god a, there is like it was a life confirm uh yeah it was so they didn't try it didn't try to scurry away or anything like that. a bed bug yeah um they don't actually move very fast oh they try to play dead they they crawl but they uh oh, st- i don't think i know psychologically what psychologically look it up very very small. So uh, part of up. me wants to know once wonders if you really saw a bed bug or no it else. was and i can attest to it because of the bites that i had oh. yeah bed bugs they're like i know i've had a couple friends who've had them and i actually the got bites bit, are so fucking, they're also the an psychological trauma of what you experience when you have a bed bug i did a oh speaking event in new jersey and the, i stayed at a shitty motel to save money and i got bit by one there yeah and i was so paranoid i threw my clothes away good because good. they are sneaky yes. they will and i think honestly shane i bet you got it from one of our our trips for ghost files or unsolved or i one don't of those. know i don't think it was around a time when we had gone on many because it was like january so but the, we had just come back from like holiday travels so it's very possible Maybe. like we'd gotten it enough. want to see bed bug walking yeah sure is that what it looked like yes it's freaking it's like the psychological torture of it of not knowing you could sleep now there are videos yeah. online of them like also running so they can run oh I've, apparently yeah I'd but just... this one's walking right you've there. never been bitten steven no never wow uh, but we also live in an apartment building and it's possible like our neighbors are, you know, but like it's possible our neighbors could be disgusting. That's the thing about LA and like places with apartments is that, you know, it's really not a thing about you. Yeah. It's everybody else. So who's doing nasty knows? shit. Um, I mean, you know, all our neighbors seem pretty on the level, but who, I don't know. Maybe we're living next door to hoarders. All these people bringing in like sofas and stuff from the outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that shit, that shit is They'll gross, man. <laughs> so anyway, it, uh, I, as with the bed bug, when I put in, you know, I got, I got little things you put on the bottom of the bed so they can't crawl up it. And I took measures after the roach thing. I, I did yeah. a very thorough inspection everywhere. I didn't see anything that concerned me. Um, and it was quiet then relatively for a very long time. <laughs> I just realized if this happened six months ago, that was right after your wedding. It was before the wedding. Oh, before, before the, wedding. the wedding. Okay, so more than six months ago. Because you got married in May. I thought this happened a long time oh, ago. Oh, I got married. <laughs> wait, oh, September. I got married in September. Okay, well, I don't know why I thought May. <laughs> wait, th- wait, did the bed bug thing happen six months ago? The, no, the bed this bug thing a while thing ago. happened like yeah. five years ago. Yeah, okay, but okay. the roach happened. The roach thing happened yeah. the roach, right before. The first roach thing happened, I think, like last spring or summer which let's, okay let's bring okay. it back to the roach so you thought you got the roach in the vacuum a year passes close to a year yeah and then and then post-wedding 
I was like brushing my teeth one day. I could see you seeing it in your eyes. And I saw in the sink. Okay. So no. No, no, no. no. Okay. Wait. Okay. There were, so there were a few mysterious things that happened. Yeah. The first one was, there was one day I walked in the house and I saw a little brown speck on the ground. And I, normally I was, I would just be like, that's a leaf or something from outside. Yeah. I don't know. And then I got closer to it and I looked at it and it wasn't anything identifiable, but I was like, what is this? This is a piece of a bug. And then I pulled up insect, like I was looking at various insects. I looked at a roach and I was like, I think this is a piece of a roach. Uh, And I was like, Sarah, this is like a piece of a roach here. Yeah. And I was like, maybe, I don't know where this came from, but it's clearly like dead because it's a function, like it's, you know, it's not, it wasn't like a shedded skin or anything. Yeah. Yeah. And I was very confused by it. And we went to bed that night. And as I was like laying in bed, I was like, doesn't make any, makes no sense. This is your sense. true detective moment, <laughs> Shane. Compe- compels me though. <laughs> <laughs> so then it was that same night I was laying in bed and I was like, doesn't make any sense. Why would that? And then I got up out of bed and <laughs> turned did my you, did phone. You, did, you sketch, did you sketch it out too? Well, I went over there with my phone flashlight and then I started looking under all of our shoes and under one of Sarah's shoes was a smashed roach. Oh, and I was like, okay, she clearly stepped on a roach outside or something. Cause that's the other thing. When I'm, if I jog around the neighborhood, especially at certain times of year, I'm just like dodging roaches on the sidewalk. Like it's an old, you know, it's a, it's an old wet town sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, in the summers, there's roaches on LA sidewalks. Just yeah, yeah. I've seen all it. over the place. I've seen it. So that was the first mysterious thing. Then I think another month had passed and I was in. Uh, I was over by our kitchen sink and I saw a little teeny tiny bug, a little teeny tiny bug. And I was like, yeah, a little bug. You know, sometimes you get fruit flies or something. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, smashed it, didn't think anything of it. Then, a, a, and I don't remember how much later this was, it was maybe a few days later, I woke up in the morning and I always have a a, a glass of water next to the bed. Yes, yes. In case I, sometimes I wake up parched. I do. Sometimes you wake up, you're, you like, get that. you're like E.T. And I have like a mouth guard out. that I wear so I don't grind my teeth in. I have that as well. And for some reason, sometimes it's just, I, it's, it sets my mouth in a way that I don't know what it makes me do, but I wake up in the middle of the night with no moisture in my yeah. throat or <laughs> mouth and I'm like, I need, it's not, I need water. It's like, I need water right now. <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm like almost choking. I don't know how humans can live. I'm, I'm like, this doesn't kill you. <laughs> like, is my stomach, are my lungs dry? Um, so I woke up in the morning and grabbed my glass of water and I don't normally look at my glass of water, but I looked no in way. my glass of water and no saw way. another one of those tiny bugs. In the water? In the water. And I have a picture of it. Just going for a dip. I, I do. I Fucking think swimming pool in this house. Hell yeah. If you don't know what roach nymphs look like, you would probably just be like, wait, oh, let me, wait, little, wait, let me get a closer no. look. Let me get a closer look. Yeah, it looks oh, like I a, could see like, that. That'd be like a baby roach. Yeah. Beetle esque. Yeah. And I'm I like, was uh, like, text me that before you lose it. I will, yeah. I'm like a papa roach. Um, yeah, this is, this is not a papa roach. <laughs> Cut my life into pieces. That's a song, right? Suffocation. No breathing. That's you at night. So I am, um, I don't like to alarm Sarah about things, but I was like, I was like trying to slow drip the information to her. (laughs) I was like, you know, I'm getting a little alarmed about these tiny bugs. And she was like, if you're concerned about it, I think that's great. You know, she was like, you don't tend to get concerned about things here in the apartment. (laughs) So if you think it's something that you need to be worried about and want to be proactive about it. (laughs) The way you delivered that, the cadence was like, this is like the beginning of an A24 horror. Film. <laughs> I'm getting a little concerned about the bugs in our apartment. So I'm, so, so, <laughs> so I'm just attuned to it now. And I'm like, it, it didn't make any sense. Cause the, the thing was yeah on my bedside and there's, there's look, there our bedroom does not have a lot of like crevices or, you know, roaches. I, from what I know, tend to, to be attracted to like areas where there's food and stuff. So that was a roach. Wait, let me just clarify it. That was a roach that walked into your water. It was alive. And you almost took a sip out of it. I almost took a sip out of at it. At like 3 a.m. in the morning. Yes, but Did I you didn't. check? Did it have trunks on? Little, Sheesh. Little roach trunks. <laughs> just going for a dip. 
Okay, so then, you know, uh, over the next couple of weeks, I'm I'm on edge, I'm on high alert, and I'm over in the kitchen now and then, and our kitchen has <laughs> cabinets above it. Yeah. Uh, as, as well as on the sides of it, but our, our sink, or our kitchen sink, rather, has cabinets above it, okay. directly above it. My eye height slash higher. It's where we keep a, you know, I don't know. And every now and then, I would continue to see I would see one little tiny bug and I wasn't sure that these were roach mm. nymphs because they I just wasn't, you know, I'm not an entomo- entomologist. Is that a... I wouldn't know. Yeah, well. <laughs> um, uh, and I would see them in the sink and I was like, are they coming up from, are these little tiny bugs coming up from... How many are we talking in the sink? I would see, I might be washing the dishes and I'd get over to the sink and before I'd run the water, I'd see like one tiny bug in the sink. And I'd be like, huh, a, a couple days might pass. I might see another one. Strange. The escalation of this is very horror film. Yes. Starting months apart, a year apart, then <laughs> a year apart, months apart, days it's apart. Starting, it's starting to snowball a little bit. So I'm, I'm continuing to get concerned. And then, like, then it starts to be, I'm seeing two in the sink. Oh, boy. Uh, and oh I'm, my God. And I'm, They're getting confident. And you know, I remember one night in particular, I was like, Sarah was watching TV or something, and I was just in the kitchen. <laughs> she, she, she didn't know. Just sitting in there like Manhunter. Just fucking. <laughs> I was just sort of like observing the situation, being like, what is going on here? And then I started to think, well, above the sink <clears throat> are these cabinets. Yeah. Oh, my God. I opened the cabinet. And I saw a little bug. It and this is the thing that upsets me about roaches is that they make decisions in a way that other bugs seem like they're just sort of living. You know, they're just living. Oblivious, they're just on perhaps? autopilot or yeah. something. I remember opening the cabinet and seeing one of these little nymphs. It like walked to the edge of like a like a cat or something it walked to the edge of the cabinet and just stopped and it was like looking at me <laughs> and i was like okay i think there's something going on in this cabinet so i tell sarah i think i think they're in the cabinet i think it's coming from the cabinet because that cabinet also uh, is connected to like the outer wall of the building yeah and there's probably you know it's an old building i'm, I'm assuming there's like cracks in the in the cabinet yeah, and it's, stuff. A, it's your roach receptacle so i Start just, to, we've got our tea up there, various tea boxes, various uh, other things. I just start taking stuff out to at least like give myself a clear view of it. And as I'm doing that, I see like one or two more. I'm smacking them. I'm killing them. Oh my God. Um, I buy little teeny tiny roach traps. Yeah. Little ones. The little tiny ones that they, you know, it's for like small roaches. They can go in, they get food, they take it back to the nest. It kills them all. That's mm-hmm. what you want. Mm-hmm. You know, that's nice. Um, and I'm like, I think we've got it licked. This is clearly where they're coming from. I think they were falling down into the sink. And then, you know, a lot of like spiders and various other bugs, they, they have a hard time climbing walls on tubs and sinks and stuff like that. So I think they were just falling down. Yeah. That means if you stuck like a broomstick into the ceiling and it cracked, yeah. just, just a fucking river of roaches. Oh God. I don't, That's don't what I'm imagining above your sink. So I put these little tiny roach traps in there, largely cleared it out aside from like a bowl and some other things, whatever. Yeah. Um, and over the course of the next week or two, I was monitoring it, keeping an eye on it. Largely, I would go there because, you know, they come out at night. So I would, I would go check on it like, you know, before bed, if I was up late at 1 a.m. on a weekend or something, <laughs> partying, <laughs> I would uh, open it up, check on it. And it seemed like they were maybe going away, like maybe... I was killing them. Uh, and I was like, <laughs> I guess that's that. And then there was one night it got, a, it got more dramatic because I, I, I was feeling good, feeling like I had a good handle on it. Yeah. Cause the other thing is Obi would still sometimes at night he'd be in the kitchen. Yeah. Uh, we, I've learned that if he pays attention to something that it's a, it's something that I should pay attention to as well. Like a ghost. <laughs> um, or hummingbirds outside. Or ghosts. He loves to look at those. He doesn't know what to do with them or how to act with them, but he likes to look at them. I'm sure he'd kill that bird if he got it. He would. Maybe. I don't know. He's afraid of his own toys, so I'm not sure. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So one night on a lark, it was like 
one thirty in the morning. I think I was reading or playing piano or something. And I was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to go get a cup of water. And I'd b- routinely just been checking the cabinets. Didn't see anything. Fine. Uh, so I went over there, got my water, opened the cabinet, got on my tiptoes to see the very high shelf. Didn't see anything. Great. Closed the cabinets. And I don't remember what else I was doing in the kitchen, but then I heard a noise in the cabinet, a little scratchy metallic tingle, like a little. Yeah. And I was like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, you did that thing where you just stop and then you the, I did because I wait. I was piercing. like, let me make because, you know, we have the kitchen's got a window to the street. I was yeah, like, that yeah. was probably a noise from outside in the street. I don't know. So I stayed dead still. And then I heard it again, and I was like, oh, that did come from the cabinet. So I opened up the cabinet and looked around, didn't see anything, closed the cabinet, waited again, then heard it once more. Oh my God. Then I opened the cabinet once more and really gave it a good looking. And on the top shelf, I had my Whirly Pop uh, popcorn maker. Yeah. And perched clinging to the side of the whirly pop popcorn maker was a roach that was maybe bigger than the one that i'd seen in my bedroom <gasps> no it's probably and it was it's, just frozen it's partner uh and i this this was the moment well, what i was talking about earlier where your adrenaline <laughs> <laughs> just skyrockets because then i was like okay and i closed the doors once more they went to bed and I walked over to the bedroom and I nudged Sarah and I was like, hey, there's a very large roach in the kitchen cabinet and I'm going to be making a lot of noise over there. <laughs> <laughs> the way you deliver information to Sarah, by the way, unmatched. Well, she was fast asleep and I was like, I need to, I need to do something about this. Uh, and I don't want to alarm her. Yeah. So I was like, you don't really have to worry about it, but uh, it's, just, there might be noise over there. Yeah. Cause she something. might think someone's breaking in or something. Right. right. Yeah. Um, so then I walked over to the closet and once again, got the vacuum and got the hose, walked over to the kitchen, plugged in the vacuum. And the issue is this, he was on the high cabinet, which I can barely see when I'm on my tiptoes. Damn. So I don't have like a good stepping stool. So I had to take our, one of our kitchen chairs that has like a wicker seat. You've probably never used a step stool in your life. (laughs) Not often. (laughs) So I had to take our kitchen uh, chair that has like a wicker seat. So I can't stand in the middle of it and I have to sort of balance on the support on the the boundary of the wood. (laughs) Yeah. Look, I'm someone who stepped on a lot of chairs in my life. (laughs) (laughs) Mouse in the house. So I did that and I had the (laughs) vacuum ready to go. I had like a, a, a solid, I think I gave myself like 20 seconds and I was like, all right, this is gonna, this is gonna be real intense once I open those doors and start trying to suck it up. Yeah. So I'm just gonna, take a brief pause here and breathe and then i flipped the vacuum on and i opened the doors and just went into like wild eyes scanning uh and i didn't see it and i was like no where did it go uh turn into chris walking (laughs) where did it go no (laughs) no (laughs) Um, so then i started nudging the popcorn maker and I saw it had clearly been hiding behind that and it ran behind a big glass bowl. Yeah. Uh, which was the other corner of the cabinet. And I was like, oh shit. Well, the only way it can come forward is through that little glass bowl. So I got the hose up in there and I was, I had it wedged against the corner. So I was like, there's only one way you can, uh, and somehow it ran past, then ran up and then disappeared. Oh, imagine how much funnier this is. If you're doing all of this with that stupid nightcap on. Oh my God. <laughs> that Just would be the a ball dream. jiggling around. <laughs> while you're ball. trying to fucking hit it with the vacuum cleaner. So it disappears and that's it. So it disappeared. Into the ceiling. Into the ceiling. Oh my God. Um, prior to this, I had wanted to do a little bit more of a, I don't know. I, I you know, I, I should have looked over that because, so after this, then I alerted my, and I had alerted my building uh, people about it prior to this the <laughs> yeah. building management because i was like i'm seeing these little bugs i think they might be roach nymphs 
Um, they have someone who comes out like every month or so to check units just in case, which yeah. I didn't know yeah. existed because it had never been a problem for me. Um, but I told them about that. They came. Uh, so after all this, I like went to bed. What I did was I opened all the cabinets in the kitchen, left the light on because roaches generally don't like any sort of light. So that's a good way to sort of keep them away. Um, uh, so they came and put, I think like a trap down or something and it was a sticky trap Yeah, so that it would, you know, catch it or something. Uh, we didn't catch anything in it. Then I don't remember. This is where the chronology gets a little weird to me. By the way, I'm glad you told Sarah you were going to do all this because if she woke up the next morning and the lights were on in your kitchen and all the cabinets were open, like fucking poltergeist, poltergeist vibes. Yeah. (laughs) Um, okay. So I don't remember how things led to this point. I just know we were watching the killer, the David Fincher film. And during this was like a week or two later when it seemed to have subsided because they came around. They yeah. Were like, I don't yeah. know what they did. They, I think they put like paper traps down. We cleared that cabinet to, uh, fully and put these traps down, which didn't catch anything sticky wise, but I don't know. It seemed like it was maybe okay. Then, um, we were watching the killer and very specifically, I remember the, the lilt in Sarah's voice when she vocalized this. We were watching the movie and she went, ah! <laughs> and I was like, what? And she said, cockroach! <laughs> and in the middle of our uh, little living room area, in the middle of the rug, a roach was just like, like as if it had been like caught when Sarah screamed it like looked like it was like looking at us oh my god and I jumped off the couch grabbed a notebook and smashed it I killed it which I'm proud of that's that pretty impressive yeah yeah because they they run I don't know if it was stunned yeah that I was like even had the gall to think that I could I mean, kill it was it. probably just trying to watch did you the, grab the first thing that came to your hands or did you like yeah I just grabbed I had a notebook sitting near me and I just grabbed it and smashed it wow that poor guy he was just trying to watch the killer with you <laughs> yeah Fastbender's crazy in this one he <laughs> 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 loves the Smith <laughs> <laughs> it was smash um, so then after that uh, I bu- I bought some more bigger traps that are the poison you're ones you're gonna need a bigger trap and then I also bought a bunch of caulk and I went in and caulked the whole caulked. Yeah. I went yeah. in to that cabinet because I was like, there are little crevices in this cabinet that probably go up into the ceiling and behind the walls and whatever. Those and cabinets. I just caulked yeah. the shit out of it. And ever since then, no problem. Huh. And that, that, that yeah. was, that was Whew. probably like, that's a lot. Four, four that is a, that's ago, a heroin tale. Ago. I think the initial traps probably wiped out a good chunk of them and all the little babies but man i was traps don't really work that well though well the ones that the the ones they say to do and they're like honestly you shouldn't even kill roaches you should just put those traps down because it basically they go and eat the the food the trap food right and then they bring bring it back back to the nest and feed all sometimes they don't find the trap i hate them a nest, a nest. Of yeah, dude. Yeah, what does a nest of cockroaches look like? Well, one of the things that I learned about I wanna, I wanna when know. I was reading about this was that the um, female cockroaches have this like egg, uh, like pod that they grow on their body that is full of. It's so disgusting looking. It's, it's very a slime factory. Uh, it's very xenomorph coated. Yeah, it's so fucking. Yeah, um, I'm telling. I just think of that MIB scene. There's a scene in that uh, that part when Will Smith kicks like the dumpster and it like collapses and just roaches fall out. Whoa. I want you to see this. This egg. is this it? Oh god! I don't yeah, know isn't that? It's Wait. like a big. Isn't that disgusting? Oh, it looks that, like it's carrying like a, like a hot dog. Yes, it, the hot dog full of baby that's roaches. Where it comes, cockroach comes from. What do you mean? <laughs> Co- cockroach? Oh, oh, oh! It looks like a little. It looks like a little ding dong. Venus looks like a little smoky lugging behind a big pee pee. Um. So, uh, yeah, no problem since then. Uh, I, I assume it was a one off situation. Unfortunately, uh, fortunately, 
Um, you could still be in the chronology. You have no y- idea. Yeah, this could true. be just an, an event in your <laughs> yeah, time. This is, this is Dune One for you. Yeah, I hope not. These um, roaches are getting more and more confident. They're just testing the electric fence like those raptors in yeah. Jurassic Park. See, at what point do you just leave your apartment? Like, what I point mean, do you move? You know, cause... we've we've wanted to move for a very long time, <laughs> but we just I don't know. The, the rent's good, and we like the neighborhood a lot. It's it's tough. It's a tough call. Yeah. Um. So I don't know. We're it. It's good though, and, and it was. You know, when when that happens, you're like, "Am I? Are we disgusting people?" But I, I talked to a lot of people in LA who were like, "No, we've we've dealt with roaches. It seems like it just happens randomly, and you gotta." You gotta I've, I've dodged it so far. Luckily, that's, that's very lucky. Well, if yeah. you, I'm telling you, Orkin, <laughs> it's not again, not an ad for them, but yeah, they they come to my house every month. I actually, every damn. month. That's it's a, a, lot. It's, a it's, a, it's like a. It's really, I mean, it's a subscription service, basically, for pest control. Mm-hmm. And it, it's honestly helped a lot. We used to get a lot of bugs, spiders, roaches. And I can't remember the last time I had to uh, that was good. kill a, or I can't remember the last time I even saw a roach. We had a lot of spiders. Spiders uh, I don't care point. about. Yeah, Daddy Long Legs. I do. I don't want to see a spider I love in my a Daddy house. Long Leg. That's fine. Daddy Long Legs are good. Yeah, they're they're eating the nasty ones. The thing that I had a That's problem fair. with was mosquitoes. Well, oh, mosquitoes. I yeah, hate mosquitoes. Just getting mosquitoes. fucking tagged. What's what's worse, a mosquito infestation or a cockroach? Oh, infestation? mosquitoes for Probably sure. Probably mosquitoes because yeah, they're actively so. hurting you. They're biting you. Like, yeah, man. They and they love me. They did really you get rid of them. yours? I know you had some. some yeah, we your... had somebody come do some spray. I don't know if the spray worked or if we're just in winter now. Yeah, but I hate mosquitoes, man. I hate skeeters. I hate them so much. The and itch, they're the they're in LA everywhere now. They're everywhere. I left Ohio thinking I wouldn't have to see mosquitoes again in well, LA. You could thank that guy who brought that bamboo tree over. We already talked about it. Uh, it's unbelievable. Episode eight. Uh, let's move on to Stephen's topic here. Yeah, uh, tipping. <laughs> oh boy, tipping. Ding. Well, I chose this topic because there was a. I don't remember what happened in a previous episode. You were talking about it. I, yeah. I I brought it up for some reason. You had mentioned it in the last episode, and I don't really know where. From. I don't I don't either. But basically, you guys I just wanted about Panera. You were talking about all Pan- Garden. Maybe yeah. And and by the way, just want to preface this: I also did work in the service industry for some time. For I was a server at a restaurant for a few years. Um, I was at Panera Bread for one day. Where were you? Wait, what? <laughs> you sorry? Sorry? Did you for did, one day? Did, did you already cover this last pod? Did you get fired? Uh, I left after an hour of the training. I just. I got bored. I've done that. I've done that. <laughs> Rainforest Cafe in Chicago. I've, I did that. No safari fries wow. for you. Wait, just like one, fuck this. The one, by, <laughs> yeah. the one by Rock and Roll McDonald's. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> hallowed. Yeah. Uh, but no, I, I just and, and I just got back from Korea too, where I didn't spend a dime on tipping. They, the tipping culture is actually frowned upon in many. It's like you know, Europe places kinda, there. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and the service in Korea was astounding. Yeah, and so there, I almost find that tipping, the correlation between tipping and service is non-existent. First of all, I don't know about that. I I um, don't have any thoughts to share on this topic. <laughs> um, okay. No, I, I've I've been to places uh, in other countries where it's just like, oh, and if you're used to it, then it's probably fine. But like the, it's a, it's a, it's a slower vibe. They're not like. They're not like, hey, what can I get you? You know, maybe They're it's like, Korea. Hey, hi, specifically. please, come here. Well, I know Cut we, that. Even even <laughs> though I know, even though that it's like part of the culture where tipping is already built into the wages, or even sometimes into the bill. When Mari and I were in France, it was always a really scary moment when we got the the check because we were always like, I feel like we should still tip mm-hmm. here because we had heard from some people that it was like, well. It's already built in, but if you did think the service was exceptional, you should you could leave, you know, a couple more euros or well, something that, like see, that. And and I think that version of tipping is more acceptable than what we have in America right now. I think I guess okay, I'll go I'll get on my soapbox right now. Tipping culture is completely broken and messed up in America. And <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, it's it's putting the burden of paying workers on the, on the uh, customer and not the business who employs like the business itself should be paying fair workers. wages to people is the 
Exactly. I think the burden of paying the employee should go to the employer, not on the person who is going for the service. Uh, you get a cup of coffee from a place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How much are you tipping that for that cup of coffee? Buck or two. A buck yeah. or two? A buck yeah. or two. But should you be tipping a buck well, or two? It depends how many cups of coffee I've gotten. Like, you know. Wouldn't it be so much better if you just paid the amount that was on the menu and then that amount got was paid to I the employee? I think it's... Um, it's curious because I think it's a little different for like restaurant workers and like baristas. Time I ago. think the fact that Steven has to ask what was tipping like at Starbucks is part of the problem because for me, my There's biggest a lot issue, of, it's, a, it's, it's the lack of clarity, or consistency across consistency, the board. Consistency, expectations. There's no communication in how you should be acting and there's a lot of disappointment because there's no clear communication that's my issue with it well because like for me i don't know why restaurant workers get tipped but then fast food workers for the most part it's not uniform to tip them like right. for you go to like a jack in the box agree. it's like why aren't they getting a couple dollars thrown on top of whatever the bill is like and then i went to a five guys recently and there was tipping on like built you know the little pad yeah the one that like it's you real anxious yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> And it's like it gives you the percentages, and I'm that's like, okay, okay, that that's, makes that's sense the there. Thing. But why isn't that everywhere else? Like, you know, tipping culture was already kind of weird, and then it's evolved in a way that's made it worse. Now you got the iPad with the like the do you want to tip thirty percent, forty percent, or fifty percent? Like some of the, these are out of control. I do, I I don't know that I've seen fifty percent. <laughs> I, okay, I have, I have it's seen usually like 15, I have seen 18, 25, 30, 35. So, yeah. and I've seen also like well. The other thing too is if you buy like a, a you know a, a, a smaller item, they'll be like, okay, is is it two, three, four dollars? Where it's like that's like you know half of the price of the bill. Sorry, Shane, you have a meeting. Yeah, um, I we're running a little over. I actually have to go. You did talk about roaches for an hour. <laughs> he tells a he tells a fifty minute roach story. Yeah, I, <laughs> hey, you guys told me to tell it. <laughs> I look not for exactly. no fault of my own. You we're know the of this podcast. I didn't think it was good. <laughs> I've got a very important meeting that I have to go to. <laughs> I thought roach story was like ten minutes, not like Odysseus. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. That's why I've been putting it off because it's very uh, you know it was a very uh, tiring story to tell. Um, but you guys can keep talking, uh, and m maybe if you're still here when, uh, when I'm done, I'll come back. Thank you, Shane. Thanks. Bye, bye everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lack of uniformity, lack of expectations, clarity, uh, and it's gone in the wrong direction. And now, I just hate how the rules are just being made up as we go along. The thing is, I'm a fairly anxious person when it comes to even deciding what I want at a restaurant or where I'm going anywhere. Making any kind of decision gives me mm -hmm. anxiety. So now when there's the added part where it's like, I want to be a good person, I want to make sure that I am tipping the proper amount or if I'm supposed to be tipping at all here, and that is like now an added like, I don't know what the rules are and I just wish I knew what the rules were. For sure. For sure. And part of it too is like the people who, I and I didn't learn this until like probably only until five years ago, but like there's kind of an expectation of tip your the person who cleans your room in a hotel. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing is, a lot of people don't do it because they don't see the person is doing that. Yeah. Like there's also this this like tipping is driven by awkwardness. Oh yeah, the obligation. By obligation, by like face to face contact. And that doesn't seem right either. Right? Like because like the bellhop usually would get tipped because they help you with your bags. Yeah. Or like the valet person would get tipped because they helped you with your yeah, car. Yeah, if the person has to see the tip you give them and then you look them look you look at you and, you know. Yeah, it's so strange. Different. Whereas like a housekeeper would get shafted because, you know, people aren't, yeah. Also, it and, and the thing, I guess the reason why I wanted to bring this up was because when I went to Korea uh, with Adam and Andrew for our new food show, which now I can talk about, but I won't go into further detail about that. When I was in Korea, the service there was incredible. Can and, you say Korea? Yeah, you can tell it's Korea. Oh, in, you can? In the, in the footage. We also posted stories of us in Korea, mm. so they know. Mm -mm. Uh, and also, a little, this is a little fun teaser. In the video teaser, there's a bird chirping in the background, which is a magpie, which is the national bird of Korea. Whoa. A little bit of an Easter egg there. Oh. Um, so that fun. wasn't stock chirping? It's a real, it's a real magpie. Nice. This frame is very funny, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. Should we like, does this look? That's fine. <laughs> Looks like we're recording a COVID pod. Like, I, like six <laughs> feet apart. Should I like fucking scoot over or something? Uh, or? Um, but the one thing I, I realized from the way they do service there is that it's a team effort, not an individual effort. And that was really cool. 
Like they were working together to make sure that I got my whatever I needed as fast as possible, as good and as quick and as well done as possible. Yeah. Um. They. It was interesting at, when I was at the um getting my hair done. I got a perm. It wasn't just like one person doing my hair the whole time. It was like five different people helping out. And they also were wearing earpieces. So they were all like, what? I know it's crazy. They, they, it was like they were like Secret the Avengers. Feel like Britney Spears. Yeah. Britney Spears. Oh, yeah. Or, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Some Any. Diva. Um, <laughs> diva. <laughs> um, but I thought that was super cool. They were like, and, and so it wasn't about this one person will pay attention to all your needs. It was like everybody is, is helping everybody out. And then you can specialize a bit more. You know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to lower Shane's mic. For people who are watching this, you'll see, I, I'm looking directly at Steven, but he's like, I could just see Shane's mic in the foreground and it looks like Shane just got snapped or something. So I'm just going to fucking move <laughs> we'll this probably out. just be cutting between the two cameras. Incredibly distracting. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just weird that certain professions get shafted to me. I, yeah, I never really thought about the fast food thing. That is very strange. I agree. And like housekeepers also another thing. Like, you know, it's it's just weird. I I don't think it's fair. <laughs> so there really should just be a standard and that would help across the board. I think if the standard was everything you pay for ever, you give a tip. You give a tip to somebody who's bagging your groceries at Ralph's. That like, it sounds like a nightmare. Yeah, but I'm just saying the fact that like there are certain people like being a housekeeper, you could argue that that is even harder, if not you know, just as hard as bringing someone's bags up to their room, and yet they don't get the tip. No, but that's the thing is like, there's just no consistency. That's what that's the issue, right? Like, because you don't tip people at the grocery store for when they bag your groceries, right? Are you supposed to? I never. That's what I'm saying. About I don't, you, that. Know, you can. I was a grocery store clerk for seven years, uh, and we accepted. T- well, we weren't allowed to accept tips, and they a lot of the places they go, you can't accept tips. I but see. Uh, you know, you carry someone's bag out to the car. It's like, uh, I did a little extra for you. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't expect it, but you, you know, kind of expect it. But then when you expect, yeah, that's... Hand out like that crisp and glover and hot tub time machine. No, and we would always say, no, no, we can't. I appreciate it. No, no, we can't. Uh, but you mm. can you refuse it twice. And then you, but you can. But you can. <laughs> but you yeah, can. Will. Yeah. They can get fired if you do that, so... Yeah, it's crazy. I don't know. It's, 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 do a, it, it's a guess. wacky kind of thing that's going on. I I I fucking Freakonomics pod here. Uh, yes. there actually I do think Freakonomics did an entire episode on this. I never listened. I'm to sure it. they have. Oh, I listened to, like every Freakonomics episode. I love that podcast. It's, that's actually the first one I ever listened to. Oh, really? We should get um, what's his name? The the, the Steves on the podcast. Who are the Steves? They're the, they're the host of Freakonomics. More Steves? Yeah, I think they're both named Steve. We should do an all Steven podcast. You and them too. Uh, <laughs> and not me. <laughs> and no Matt. We no Matt. No Ryan. Not you. And not me. Exactly. Yeah. Are they both? I, now I got to. No, Steven, you're right. They do have the same name. Steven I Cube. Were. I think they're both Stevens. They actually made me want to career pivot into economics. Well, you cover the economics of Watchers. So you kind of a uh, barely. <laughs> It's not comforting. <laughs> it's not comforting at Barely. all. And by the way, I was I was a, a server that received tips, uh, and it always felt weird that the people in the back didn't share in those tips. And they don't. They don't. And in, in the, my restaurant, they did not. I and I was pulling in about twenty five an hour, doing service, and the po- people in the back probably making about fifteen. I don't oh, know. And they weren't getting the tips. But like they're doing. Ha- all I'm ever doing, I'm delivering the food from the person in the back to the person eating it, and I get the money. It yeah, doesn't so why make sense. Do you, why do you get the premium? Yeah, that's see, that's exactly so what weird. I'm talking about. But as a server, were you being paid less hourly? I was getting paid hourly three bucks an hour, I think. Yeah, that's crazy. But still, I was getting paid overall more than them. So like, yeah, but that that shouldn't be on the customer to make up the difference. Exactly. You know, yeah. you know what I hate is those restaurants that will do auto tip and then they'll leave a space for you to tip on top of that. Oh, gratuity included? It's, it says gratuity included, but then they don't really notify you of that like very cl- clearly in the receipt and then they have another section for tipping. So then well, you double tip. I don't like when it says gratuity included and it's not clear how much percentage or how much was actually tipped. Mm. Uh, and then my, oh. my, my mind is like breaking. I'm like trying to do the math. I'm like, wait a second. Is that an appropriate amount? Because if that's like 15, 18%, I want to tip more than that. But why are you making me do math right now? You're trying to like, it's like, it's a confusing thing. Uh, but that was the situation in Europe. Gratuity included. 
and I always kind of felt like I don't know if that's enough. Uh, so it's 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 a macro version of uh, how we have no great healthcare system, so people have to go fund each other's. That's uh, true. It's health. crazy. It's awful that we uh, that the looking after each other is left to the individual. <laughs> America, baby. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah, capitalism at its clear finest, right there. Hey, watch this. You know who you have to tip real big? Tattoo, <laughs> tattoo, tattoo artist. artist. There it is. Right into tattoos. Cause, uh, look, I don't know how deep we're going to get here. I, I've been wanting one for a while. In fact, some eagle eyed uh, viewers of Watcher did notice that I actually kind of dipped my toe into the pool a little bit because uh, there's, I forget the name of the site. It was one of those like, temporary tattoos that are like ink box ink box yeah they last like two three weeks i was like let's take this for a spin and just see how it feels this feels like an ad for them it's not uh but i just wanted to see do i will i be weirded out by seeing it and like the first day or two i was kind of like that's interesting but i really did like it i didn't see this where did you have a tattoo I had it right here which is where i eventually want it like i don't want like a huge one well, what like did you have on like, there wait like how, how did i miss this i actually think i'm gonna get a version of what that was because i I feel that the only time I truly ever feel really relaxed and present is in the forest for some reason. There's something about mm. just being surrounded by trees that makes me feel very calm. And uh, this was the temporary tattoo was these two trees and a, and a guy on a hammock, but it was like all oh, cute. Uh, uh, like just like all just shadow art, I suppose, is I guess the way I could say it. It wasn't like color. It was just like silhouettes. They look like silhouettes mm. of trees and a guy in a hammock. And I really like that. Like and a DreamWorks kid. Essentially, yes. Like the yeah. DreamWorks kid, except the inverted version. That'd be a sick tattoo. Can I, I, can I share something about that tattoo that uh, may make you either want to get it more or want to get it less? What? My last name, Lim, yeah. comes from the Chinese character Ling. Yeah. L-I-N. And Ling is... Uh, the, the Chinese writing of it is two trees next to each other. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I can have a little so, bit of Steven. So you have me. my last name on your, <laughs> on your Well, the thing I liked about it too was because it was the two trees, and I know I'm doing a lot of visual stuff on a fucking audio He's medium. He's just pointing at his arm. But yeah, there, there was two trees, and then there was a hammock connected to the two trees, and a guy in between them, you know, laying on the hammock. It kind of looked like an incognito M, which is obviously the first initial of my wife's name. Yeah. Uh, and that was something that I thought was interesting. But oh. I, I think if I were to get it, and I'm not, I'm not saying why am I saying if, I'm going to get it at some point. I just, I forget who it was that told me this. Somebody told me that if you really want a tattoo, but you're unsure, wait a full year. And if mm. you still want that tattoo, then do it. And it's, it's been role. definitely at least advice. a year. Um, so I think I would add maybe a tree or two more on the side. And I probably will have like a little, little saying. I actually, it's funny that Shane's not here because he said that if he were ever to get a tattoo, he would not. Oh, there he is. Speak of the devil. And he Oh, here. wow. Look, can I show you? Conjured. This, this is the tattoo that Ryan what wants up? to get on his, uh, on his arm. No, 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 no. Definitely. This is my last name. And uh, it's two trees next to each other. No, I can't, I oh, can't get cool. any, which is, I can't get any Chinese characters. I'd be very 2000s <laughs> coded. <laughs> it says peace and love or some shit like that. We're but. talking tats? Yeah. And I was just mentioning Tat -chat. you. And I was like, because if I were to get a tattoo, I would want a little, like a tiny little phrase on it. And I was saying that would be unlike Shane because Shane told me that if he ever wanted a tattoo, he wouldn't want it to be meaningful really in a well, I don't know. I've actually been weighing it a lot recently because Sarah got a tattoo. Yes, like and it's great. Four, five months ago. Wait, are you thinking about it too? Last year when we were in New Orleans, there was a there was a moment when we were walking around and we were like a little buzzed and I was like, should we get tattoos right Mari now? Had and I had that when we oh. were in Banff. And Sarah was like, I don't know. And uh, I had talked with her about that later. I was like, man, we should have done that. That would have been fun. She was like, I didn't know you were serious. I was like, yes, I was. And we also had that conversation. <laughs> That's crazy. I was like, I will do it right now. What were you thinking of getting? Would it be no ma idea. matching or different? I don't know. There was really no thought. I was just like, let's fucking get tattoos. This trip kicks ass. <laughs> well, we've also kind of joked about, this is more jokey. We've joked about getting some sort of tattoo as a crew for 
ghost files are unsolved. Yeah, like yeah. Would you ever do Rings that? People. I I just saw a Maybe little video of like yeah. the yeah yeah. I saw that video of like Robert Downey Here's and all those thing. guys got one at the and then Mark Infinity Ruffalo War. did not. We I talked think. about doing that for unsolved, and I'm glad I never did that. And I'll tell you why. He'd be the Ruffalo because I, <laughs> because I like I love the people we travel with and yeah. all that, but. I don't care about ghost hunting. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not to like say you love ghost hunting. It's to remember the group of people. I just don't want a people. fucking ghost on my body. That sucks. A tiny little you know? ghost. Yeah, you could have got the uh, the BuzzFeed uh, arrow. You're up. right. Yes. That yes. would have been, been really good, dude. You, but yes. it could at a friendship level. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, ever since Sarah got one, I've almost gotten one like on two or three occasions. I've been like, I might do it this week. I've, I've already started to message a, a tattoo artist that I think I might go That's to. That's fun. So I, and I think Mari and I are going to go together and just get something different. That's um, cool. Whoa. The one I, I really want to get, and I told Adam Bianchi this before he made me, I think I showed you the shirt that he made for me uh, mm. with Sluggo from Nancy, the Nancy comics. Yeah. It's an incredible Sluggo comic that I love where he's trying to bite a walnut. He's trying to crack a walnut. Yeah. Have you seen this? No, I haven't. And he's like, boy, I wish I could uh, crack this walnut. And he's like walking down the street and then a flower pot falls from above and smacks him on the head and the walnut cracks and it's flying out of his teeth. And he says, boy, it's my lucky day. <laughs> and you would want that? And I really, really want the final frame of that comic on on me. I've thought about getting that. That's kind of fun, but that does have a little bit of a meaning. We're like finding... I did think about that after the fact. I just think... um visually it's just such a very clean beautiful drawing um colored love the no it's just line art oh cool i don't have my phone on me otherwise where sure. my question with you then is this is actually i i'm more curious where you would get the tattoo Taint. because at a tattoo <laughs> Parlor. Oh, you said dick. Yeah, because I would have mine on my forearm. <laughs> a tattoo parlor. <laughs> my left true. forearm, but I was I'd be curious where would Shane get a tattoo? And if I look, could I guess? Because I feel like you're a very specific guy. So there's a lot of things to consider. I also think you wouldn't want it to be very like out there, so you wouldn't want the option to have it covered. So I would guess maybe somewhere like on the top of your arm, like above your elbow, perhaps. Um, I've 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 seriously considered many places. Uh, you know, taint being top three, taint, taint, taint at the top. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, like inside the forearm or a oh, fleshy here. part, the fleshy part. Well, with mm. this, is this gonna hurt the forearm? Yeah, I mean, more so than uh, it's all gonna hurt. N- y- y- yeah, I mean, that is probably I only have two, but that's that's where I have mine. And how and much it, did it hurt? It, it was really fine up until the the soft inside of the elbow. Well, I don't know if I'm gonna go, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure I stay. Well, you're me. also like. Mats are very involved in their their color. Yeah, color. Yeah, mine yeah. will not be that. Yeah, I, I would want to. Mine will be more silhouette. A lot of rubbing. Of a lot of rubbing when they do Ugh, the shading and yuck. shit. And it's like, fuck. There Christ. was a while ago where I wanted to get a tornado tattoo. Dude, that fucking rules, <sighs> right? I, you I, should I, get two tornadoes on your nipples, man. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the new Crow? The new Crow movie they're making? Tornado tits. He's got a tattoo of a guy, but one of the guy's oh, yes. eyes is his eyes. nipple. Oh, fuck I was yeah, very man. confused by that. Um, no, there's a well because I'm so enamored with tornadoes, uh, and they sort of haunted me from my childhood. But I was simultaneously like mystified by them. And there was a, at one point I I was, <laughs> and this is why I'm. I think it's good to be for me to be very hesitant about getting tattoos because. It's good to stew on them. You should get the temporary tattoo like I did. Oh, right. Just, just for really. placement, just to yeah. see where you would feel weird. But I sketched like, a, I was like, this is a pretty cool sort of minimalist tornado design. And I, I sketched it. I was like, I might, that sign might be something I could get. It feels somehow familiar, but it is a tornado, but it's minimalist. And um, then the next day I was like looking at it again. I was like, why does this look so familiar? And I was like, it's the Jamba Juice logo. Ah, <laughs> yeah, nice. I, I just sort of drew the Jamba Juice logo, and I'm yeah, glad I didn't get this on my on my body. Yeah, dude, just needed a reminder that do it in your, logo in your belly button, you know, oh, a little yeah. cyclone coming out of the, my little bowl of oatmeal. <laughs> I won't lie, and it's a little embarrassing to say that one of the main deterrents for me is because I am a pretty big wimp when it comes to pain. Yeah, I don't, and I don't like being cold. I don't, you, you know this, but I don't like my hands feeling like yeah, nasty. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm worried that I'm going to really, really hate the experience. But I guess if it's 
for a lifetime of being able to look down and feel relaxed, you know, maybe. I'll tell you what, Sarah's got the tattoo crazies, though. That's a real thing. That's the, as soon as uh, she was like, I'm probably could get she i think she's got a max she's like i probably don't want to get you know more than five but she was like i could i could very easily get another one or two now i already have two i the one i already mentioned which would be on the forum and then maybe something i just want really small text somewhere maybe like on my right wrist or somewhere just that <laughs> that just says rides Mm. <laughs> that's I good i fucking love rides dude by the way this is an aside but if you guys talked on your podcast about Susie's. What the hell? Oh, like an enthusiast? <laughs> yeah. Nah. Okay. Why? <laughs> I was just listening to that podcast I sent you about the roller coaster enthusiasts. And oh, they all yeah. call themselves enthusies. Nah, Byron and I have never really came up with any kind of slick nomenclature. It's just been, we love rides. You call yourself sickos. Yeah, but that could be anything. Like, that could be, you could be a sicko for, like, the AMC ants. Like, yeah. you know, like, it's not specific to... I guess Thuzi would be also, I guess, in the vein of a sicko, I suppose. I just, I don't feel good when I say the word Thuzi. Thuzi. Like I said, I, I also don't like the phrase uh, Disney adult. I wish there was some sort of phrase for theme park adult, because that's what I would mm. consider myself. Sure, of course. Because mm. I love theme parks. Well, well, Rides would be a good tattoo. Rides would be fucking sick. I want to sell shirts that say Rides for FYA. Uh, and while I was gone, I, I wanted to, Stephen, have you given it serious thought? Because I, I did hear your, your, yeah. Uh, I, Probably won't ever get one in my life. No, no. Tammy, yeah. Tammy might and probably will. That scans. I, I and think I wonder she might if that's do offensive with that. That scans for me. Wait, what scans? What it scans that you wouldn't get a tattoo. Why well, offensive? I think uh, I feel like you wouldn't uh, because <laughs> it's expensive and there's no real return <laughs> on it. No, but there is it's, something. It's not that, that it's that it's that for <laughs> me personally. There's nothing in my life that I'm like, oh, I want that on my body. And I want that forever. Yeah. I think I'd rather have like a one year tattoo, but. I, oh, like uh, ephemeral or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting to me uh, when people get like tattoos related to like bands they love or something. Uh, I'm glad I never did that because I can, I can, it's weird. Like I can look at the bands that I listened to in high school, like early college. And there are probably bands from that era or musicians where I've been like, I would get a tattoo related to that person. But now, 10, 20 years removed from that, it's like I can look back and like point to a dozen, maybe less bands where yeah. I'm still like, I still love this band just as much as I did back then. I will then. say the more tattoos you get, it does seem like it devalues the other ones in, yes. a, in, a, in a great way. Yeah. In a way that's like, who gives a fucking shit? This is very similar to when I first got into watches. I was like, there are a couple ones that I know I want to get they're not expensive and I'm going to stop. And mm -hmm. that actually helped. For tattoos, it's like, I want two. I want the one there and I want rides somewhere. Rides is fun. But if you go full throttle into it, then you can break that seal and just be like, well, now I'll get whatever I want. Well, I just don't like the look of too many tattoos. Mm -hmm. And also... Machine Gun Kelly? Yeah, I don't want to... I don't want a sleeve, dude. I don't want to look like Travis Barker. He has more than a sleeve. <laughs> didn't, didn't he just get like... Yeah. He's he got like... A full black, like, and people were like, no, the guy's, he's like, could you make me into the creature from the Black Lagoon? <laughs> yeah, um, I, uh, I'm, I will say that I feel like even me talking about this is going to be surprising to people because based on the reaction I've gotten from people saying I want a tattoo, they're always, they're usually like, that, they're not like, that makes sense. It's more like, oh, really? That's surprising. Mm. So I have a certain part of my personality that doesn't seem tattoo, uh, Adjacent. Oh, for sure. You're not, you're, I mean, you're a very, your personality is a rule follower of sorts. And is, yeah, tattoos kind of signify breaking the rules a little bit. There's also, honestly, there, I don't feel like there's a lot of edge, uh, yeah. perceived edge at least. So that possibly plays yeah, into it. Yeah, but tattoos are like, that's gone from tattoos. Everybody. It's still there. It's still there to, for me because to, of the rule to following. people who don't have them, it is. It, yes. It's still, yeah, that's it's a true. tough, it's a tough it's threshold. Because I am a rule follower. I've always thought, like, oh, that person's edgy. They, put something on them forever because i still have that weird antiquated mindset of just like oh someone put a tattoo on they must be like kind of little hardcore <laughs> like, i just feel like i have tattoos and i feel like i'm the least interesting person there is well okay let me ask you this like matt if you were getting <laughs> let's say you were in a bar and this is just like you matt i'm in there you, all the you time. get into a shoving match with somebody mm -hmm. and like he's like let's go and he does that thing that guys do sometimes where they take their shirt off before sure. they fight 
<laughs> if the person took their shirt off and they had no tattoos and the person took their shirt off and they had and they had several tattoos they have like a big one on their chest are you more worried about the guy without tattoos or more worried about the guy with the giant chest tat I, I well i mean i have a different honestly be no, honest seriously i don't think i'd if he had a neck tat i'd be like fuck <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't even get into the push you'd be like sorry sir I'll buy you another drink but beyond that I think it's really not that big of a deal because if I'm in my being honest in my heart of hearts and maybe this is some sort of revealed prejudice I have if somebody took their shirt off and they had a chest tattoo and someone didn't I would be more willing to fight the non-chest tattoo person because I would like my chances a little more because I'm scared I, there's an edginess that I perceive whether it's right or wrong yeah but the person without the tat is is repressing something deep and dark oh, like a Stephen oh. Lamb and they would and they they have a they have something in them they have a darkness in them <laughs> would you would you feel any would do you ha, do you understand what i'm saying like would you in your heart of hearts would you actually not be as more scared of the tattooed person i'm scared of anybody who takes their shirt off and public <laughs> <laughs> but i'm saying if it was like like what if she, what if you and I were at a bar yeah. and two guys started shoving us and they both took their shirts off and they were the same build they were twins I just they start, were twins I just start hugging you but <laughs> but if they were twins and they're like you two we're going right now and one of the twins had a tattoo and the other didn't have a tattoo would you not be like I'll take the non-tattoo guy I, probably yeah but. I don't think it matters at that point. This yeah, is like I don't that, think so either. This is like that Netflix show where they have twins try different diets. Oh. You know, just because mm, it's like I'm, they have similar genetics. Sure. Or identical sometimes. You are what you eat. So, uh, is that what it's called? It's a pretty clever premise, honestly. It's one of those premises when I hear it, I'm like furious I didn't think of it. But like, dude, you want to be work, you want to create that show? Well, I just, it's just a, a funny, a fun idea it's to think so of. So furious I didn't. Well, it's those just, twins it's, different things. It's right there. Like, we don't know if a diet actually works. So why don't you try it on two people that have identical... One peanut butter and another one celery right no, now. I'll take the peanut butter. Yeah, uh, but, and also, I'll take the person who doesn't have a tattoo. Like, if Stephen Lim had a twin and one Stephen Lim had a sleeve and the other one didn't... I almost think the, the scarier version of me is the non-tattoo version. I don't though. think so. I think you with a tattoo, Stephen, is the scariest thing I, I've ever think, seen. I think the repressed thing is a real thing, though, too. Would you rather fight tattooed Ryan or non-tattooed Ryan? I don't know if it matters. I'll take either of them. <laughs> yeah. You know. If you get a theme park tattoo, I'm going to want to beat your ass. <laughs> <laughs> nah, dude. What if my chest tattoo was a giant rides right here? And then you're like, if that guy's a if psycho. If it's a big rides, then I'm concerned. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> rides. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, I, I don't know what any of that revealed about me, but I. The point is, I think tattoos are cool. I'd like sure. one. I, I'd like, and I think it's awesome that they could also make me uh, remind me of things when I look at them. Is particularly if I'm like in a spiral or something, I look down and be like, "All right, maybe it's not that bad." I, I do mean, think yeah. that they make people. It seems like if someone has a tattoo, they take things less seriously, and right. that is nice. But I don't think that they're more like edgy. I think that they're like more chill, probably. The thing about tattoos, regardless of what you think about them, is that you do think something. You see someone with that tattoo, and you will. <laughs> that's, a great, that's, a, that's a great uh, wrap up to your YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just saying, you are going to have an opinion on it. It's not like you see someone with a tattoo, and you're not going to, even if that opinion's like, hey, I like that tattoo, or I don't. It's wild that people have gotten tattoos based on stuff that we've made. That's crazy to me. That makes me people nervous. With professor tattoos. The, the permanence of that. People with unsolved tattoos. Yeah. I, have, I mean, I'm very flattered by it, but it does it scare is, yes. me. It scares me because I am not willing to permanently tattoo something on myself at this point yet. <laughs> yeah. And yet someone is doing it of something that we had a hand in creating, and that makes me nervous. I can't exactly put my finger on why, but it does. Still appreciative of it. It's very flattering. Absolutely. But I do want to get a tattoo soon, so maybe that'll fade. Well, that was a lot of fun, yeah. and I'm excited to show off our tattoos next week, and I'm excited to show you <laughs> my night hat, which Sarah sent me a photo of. I said, go out, get the package. Get tattoo she, the night hat. She tried it on, and I'll tell you what, this looks like one good night hat. Is she a fan of it? Yes. Ooh. So, excited to bring that in next week. Thanks for listening to Pod Watcher. As we said at the top of the show, if you enjoyed yourself, give us a like. Give us a subscribe if you haven't. Rate us five stars. Subscribe to the. It's crazy channel. that that worked. It yeah, worked last know, episode. I ask people to do these kind of. I things. didn't know that people. Yeah, people actually listen to us. I'm a person who also just forgets to do these things, and when people tell me to, I go, "Yeah, I do like this podcast. Let me subscribe." So there you go. Um, we'll see you next week, everybody. Yeah.